update. Yep. So before you prepared we, something, right? Yeah, before we before we do the cluster, right, and that all all that stuff, we let's have a look at the version of the clustering, or uh, not of the clustering of the HCI that we installed, right? And sometimes it's not so easy to um, to get the version number, uh, especially the uh, the minor uh, the minor version here uh, is, is is difficult, right? So there is a website out um, that would tell me which version or which patch level I'm running and which how many updates I can expect to be um, yeah uh, to be available right so the website is this right um, go out in the internet and you will find your place or the space where you can um, actually look up the version the release information and as you could see here we are using 22h2 um, that's because of this number here um, but the minor build version at the uh, at the end is not even listed anymore. So I'm running, I would say, a pretty old version, or at least you know uh, before October twenty uh, second. So I think we do have some updates uh, to be expected to be to be installed, right? Yeah. The ISO that you download from the internet is always the first version that is available. It it is not um, updated um, with patches so you get always the first version and this is why we now update all our host as the first step before we build the cluster and everything so let's change to my screen mm -hmm. updates we can do with sconfig i'm now um, logged into the system over rdp i have a nice rdp client here uh, from a fellow mvp it's called um, how it's called, uh, Royal TS, mm -hmm. and there is a free version of it available for 10 connections or so. Um, so now I go to five update settings. No, this was the wrong one, of course. Uh, install updates is six. Mm -hmm. So in five, we could configure if the system does automatic updates or um, only if you want to update it. And with a cluster, it should not automatically update itself. Uh, you mm -hmm. should uh, time the update with, uh, for example, cluster way updating. We will talk about that when we have a cluster, of course. But now, uh, as a first step, we update every node. So we will install all quality updates. And um, let's give the system a bit. It has to reach mm -hmm. out into the internet because we don't have configured the update channel to use a WSAS server. That's also possible. So this system directly reaches out into the internet and we will install all the updates. And this will take a while. So this gives us a, maybe a possibility to talk a bit about why we update Bernard. Why is it important to update the system? Well, um, first of all, I mean, notice that we do have only uh, two updates to be mentioned here, right? So the later one, you know, the one with the 705 at the end is uh, the latest update for Azure Stack HCI. So that should bring us to the latest build version, which is the build number 1607, which I can, you know, uh, I can rerun my script after the updates just to verify that we really got it. Why should we update? Well, um, there is a support policy for Azure Stack HCI, which says uh, don't fall, uh, don't fall behind, right? Because you won't get uh, any support there. Uh, maybe that's a little bit nicely put, um, but you know we have, as far as I know, a six months uh, cadence, or not a cadence, but uh, you have six months time in order to um, to go to a supported patch level. Yeah, I would say it's important is uh, if you have ever a problem with a cluster mm -hmm. and you call Microsoft support, the first thing they want to do you is to update your systems and um, updating a not so well running installation is maybe not the, the best thing to do, but you have to do that because mm -hmm. uh, they don't know every bug that was 13 versions ago, for mm. example, 13 is just a number here for 13 months, maybe. So always update your systems every month. Yes. I'm not talking about every three months, every six months, update it every month. Second thing is, when do you update it? You, you may know that Microsoft um, brings 
out the updates every second Tuesday of the month. So I would not install the updates on the second Wednesday of the month. I would wait a bit. And this is not the official Microsoft policy, but I'm not Microsoft. I'm a Microsoft MVP. So wait. If, if it's possible for you to wait, for example, two weeks, that's okay. There are some companies who can't wait. For example, in the finance sector, they have to update very fast, especially if there are some security uh, patches involved. Um, or you, if you have actually bugs um, and that these bugs are maybe fixed in those updates, uh, update faster. But usually it's a good practice to update every month and then maybe wait for two three weeks because other people will find uh, some bugs and my Microsoft will maybe fix them. Uh, Bernard, I think your microphone is not working. Is that possible? Yeah, I it muted is. myself because I wanted not to disturb you, right? Um, we're saying that, so yes. That's so uh, nice of you. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, um, yeah, I keep, you know, it, it is good, a good practice to, uh, to have, something in your manual uh, for updating your HCI system, definitely. So you should yeah. be prepared for this, for this and not wait for support because you don't want to troubleshoot a problem that has already been solved, right? Um, yeah. there. Another thing I like to add here, um, Azure Stack HCI is on a subscription basis. Mm. So you, uh, you, um, you, you don't buy Azure Stack HCI, you use a subscription. So you pay every month for uh, Azure Stack HCI and you are uh, eligible to the newest version. Mm -hmm. As long as you pay, you get the newest version. If you don't pay anymore in Azure, um, the, the workload that is running in your cluster will continue to run, but you can't add new workloads, for example, and it's license wise, it's not okay. So you are elig eligible always for the newest version and Microsoft with Azure Stack HCI, it's only only uh, virtualization, virtualization, failover cluster, storage spaces, direct software defined networking. So it's a small subset of the Windows server mm -hmm. and uh, Microsoft is uh, able to give you a new version at least every year. So um, you you have the right to install this version and you have to install this version. This is what uh, Bernard m meant. Uh, an old Azure Stack HCI version is only supported for another six months after a new one uh, comes out. So in the moment we are installing uh, a 22H2. This came out in October 2022, and I assume in the same time frame, um, frame in 23, so maybe October 23, we will get a new version of Azure Stack HCI. And then uh, Azure Stack HCI, this is hypothetical. So, and then Azure Stack HCI 22H2 is only supported for another six months after the uh, the new version came out. So if you run uh, 22H2 in 20, 24, 2024 in October, you don't have a supported system unless Microsoft changed the support policy. So this is the statement how, how it's now. So you have to update your system. You get new features. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So now I have to reboot the system. No, it don't want to reboot. Why doesn't it? Restart. Yes. Hmm. Okay. I think maybe I'm not still logged on to that system as well. You are logged on and that's so true. So I will force it. <laughs> so um, uh, you should update, you get new features. Uh, and um, if you call, for example, in 2024, uh, um, support person from Microsoft with a problem in Azure Stack HCI, and it is uh, H22H2 uh, uh, or even 21H2, they will ask you to upgrade to the newest version because mm -hmm. they change a lot every year and uh, they don't know everything what, that was a problem two years ago or three years ago or four years ago, right? Yep. This is maybe why you should update. So I will try to get into the system again. Mm -hmm. 
but I think it will take a little bit. Yeah, and, and the challenge that you have with the with the update cadence, uh, to be clear, right? So there are maybe other products or other services that you are um, using in conjunction with HDI, for example, management tools like uh, it could be System Center Virtual Machine Manager, for example, right? Um, make sure that you have uh, the right version of System Center Virtual Machine Manager as well. So they bring their update roller packages, right? Um, and they need to be on par with HCI. Um, that makes things a little bit difficult. And also, you know, um, doing regular updates from our perspective um, is also a challenge a little bit for the hardware vendors. So um, they might you know, want you to wait a little bit longer for updating because um, they haven't uh, finalized their testing yet. So yes, um, I agree that there is some, you know, um, the uh, the update cadence brings some challenges with it, right? But for the uh, for the good portion of it, I mean, you do have an operating system uh, that gets new features on a regular basis and you benefit from them, right? Okay, so I have a connection to the system. Um, I might want to run, you know, my partial script again. If you share my screen again, uh, that I do be... that already. Okay, that would be awesome. And I launch that thing again and display the version. And now you could see the version or the the minor version at the end has changed. Um, and that's what we want to see. And now we just need to do it on the other nodes as well. Okay, I will do that, and we will see us in the next video.